another uh, kids book club book talk. So, so this month we read Healer of the Water Monster by Brian Young and this book is about Nathan who goes to visit his grandmother Nolly um, on the Navajo reservation and he meets a um, holy being and he tries a to water save monster. a water monster and he tries to save him. Uh, so did you like it, Miss Teresa? I loved it. it was I liked great. it so much. I liked it too. <laughs> it was very, it was just touching and it was funny and it was really well written and it was about stuff that I didn't, I had never heard of before, um, myth-wise. Yeah, I, I, I don't have any knowledge of any of the Navajo folklore, so this was a great book of like an introduction of that. And I just, I love the writing. I thought the author did such a great job with the, all the characters. Mm -hmm. I really liked all the characters in here. Um, but yeah, it made me, there was like parts that I laughed and there was parts that I cried in and like I just had a full range of emotions with this book. Yeah, I think the author, um, I mean, he is of Navajo descent and he even states, I think in the back somewhere that he wrote it he's qualified to write it because he knows these stories and also it comes from like a place of um deep respect yes that sometimes maybe it isn't in other books. yeah that he has he he spoke to um the people in his tribe and he um really took time to make this book very respectful of these tales that have been passed down for generations mm -hmm. um and i just i really respected that and i really got into Nathan's journey you know he he goes on a journey um as an 11 year old you know and it was it was a lot but it was I thought it was beautiful and this would really be my top five of books that I've read this year wow. yeah I really yeah like it. it's, it's definitely one of my favorites for sure um so what exactly did you like Miss Teresa I I like Nathan I just thought he was such a good character um he really grows in the book and he starts off great I mean He's a kid and he's happy to spend the summer with his grandmother, but also the reason why he's there is because he doesn't feel like he's wanted by his dad, you know? Unfortunately, his parents are divorced and his dad has a girlfriend. Girlfriend. Yeah. Leandra. Leandra. And so he feels like he's infringing on that relationship. So it was, it was hard to see him go through that, but also great to see his respect for his grandmother and for his um, his uncle and for him to be willing to learn some of the traditions of of the Navajo people. So I really liked that. I, th I thought he was just... Yeah. It, yeah, I mean, it was really interesting to learn about the traditions and uh, the myths, all obviously. But yeah, like you are saying, his um, the fact that his parents are divorced and his dad's dating someone new it's something very common, but I don't even think you see it very well portrayed. Yeah, portrayed and in, um, I think they did a good yeah, job. He did a really good job of showing Nathan's emotions. You know, he's he's trying to understand and he's trying to to handle it in his own way. And I just I thought he was just a great character that he showed um, that it was okay to be a good friend and a good son and to care about not only himself but like his family members and then the other um the tribe the, the the, yeah exactly the holy beans that were there you know so I, I really did like that speaking of the holy beans i really enjoyed all the holy beans um there was like jet stone boy jet stone girl yeah the wind, darkness darkness the, um, um, the moon wind was sand yeah oh the wind uh, the yeah moon, the, um I like the assistants too. I thought well, Seed Collector was hilarious. <laughs> He's a bit pushy though. It's a little uh, he was a horn, very horn toad. Yes, very sassy. <laughs> yes. Um, I even like spider, and I am very scared of spiders. I know you don't like the spider. I, I okay. <laughs> There's that one scene with Grandfather Firewood at the time. Yeah, just the the grandfather spider. And Nathan like talks him into helping him by saying, hey, you can live in the outhouse, it'll protect you. And there's a lot of bugs everywhere. 
And I just love that scene because all his like, oh, yeah, outhouse, outhouse. And I just love the outhouse. Yeah. yeah, and then he's like, the grandfather's like, but if you cross me, Nathan, yeah. I will follow you everywhere and bite you forever. <laughs> no matter the distance. No matter, yeah, even if you are in Phoenix. Yeah, I just, um, I really liked all those um, characters and, you know, real representation of mythology and Navajo culture. I thought it was just really awesome to read. Yeah, I, I mean, but Nathan's like reaction to them also was really nice to see. Like, yeah. he wasn't mean to them. He, you know, seed collectors rude to him. He calls him like a fat, 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 like a pudgy, pudgy you know? and, fat. and Nathan's a little, you know, embarrassed about his weight. He is a little on the heavy side. And so, you know, he doesn't hurt them. And even when he, he's scared of spiders, mm -hmm. but even he, he goes through a journey and he comes to love spider at the end. And yeah. so, you know, it was, it was good to see that. It was great. I, I loved it so yeah. much. <laughs> um, is there anything you didn't like about the book? I'll say, uh, yeah. it's not that I didn't like it, but um, it was really sad at times. And a lot of the subject matter was really heavy and I felt really bad Nathan had to deal with all this adult issues, like with his uncle Jet, who is dealing with alcoholism, yeah. which is very common everywhere. But it's not that I didn't like it, but I was just like, gosh, this is this is sad. It was. I have to agree that there were parts in there that, I mean, they made me cry. You know, hearing or reading where Uncle Jed is hearing the ash bean telling mm -hmm. him, you're worthless. No yeah. one loves yeah. you. You're you'll not, never be good you'll enough. never be good enough. And then it gets onto Nathan and all the things that he sometimes thinks about himself are just amplified by the ash being, you know, he's there telling him all of these things and he doesn't want to talk to anybody and he doesn't want to see anybody. And so those moments were very sad and, or feeling like, you know, his thinking about his parents' divorce. And, yeah. So the divorce is also the, the details he brings up in the book are awesome and spot on, but they're very sad. Yeah. But I, but I also, as much as those were parts that I didn't like, or not, didn't like but that they made me feel sad i really liked how the author made nathan react to them nathan didn't give up like he he found his bravery and he faced those things head on like the moment where um he's facing like the four trials at the very end like one of the trials is you can sleep forever and you can stay and imagine my family all whole and we're happy and there's no you know, fighting or anything, and that's not reality. And Nathan realized that as much as he would love to have his parents together, he would rather have his parents be happy. Yeah. And so you see that, you, his growth and his, he's facing those fears and his sadness. And I, I really like that. Theme in the ending, I don't want to say exactly what happens, but it's a bittersweet ending. And I, I like, I really like the book, but I was like, gosh, this is hitting me in all the feels. It is, Melissa doesn't like to feel so many feels all at once. It and was. I all of them. You know, you get the parts where you laugh out loud and it's super funny, and but then you do have those moments of like, okay, like this is serious, um, and it and it's sad and it makes you think, and it is bittersweet at the end. But there's a I like the changing woman who comes as the butterfly to mm -hmm. Nathan, and even though I think sometimes we forget when we read these um, hero books or adventure books that sometimes things don't always happen like we want them to. And that it doesn't mean that you're not brave enough. It doesn't mean that you're not worthy enough. It's just sometimes these things happen and you've tried your best and that's what matters. And so I did like that message. You know, it may be sad, but there's a glimmer of hope and you can't forget the hope. Very well said, Miss Teresa. Great Thank you. job. <laughs> so would you read another book? Yes, I really, I, you know, I hope that he continues this because he kind of, left it open-ended a little bit like you know Nathan may be able to visit these people he's still young yeah. enough where he can talk to to everyone he's not losing his ability to see the the these um the all the like the mystical things so I, I would love yeah yes. I'd love to have more stories about the third world and the first world right yes um mother water monster was oh, terrifying she was pretty <laughs> pretty yeah intimidating um yeah, we don't know if he's in the book coming out, but we'd like to read the next one yes. if, you, if you're gonna write it, Mr. Mr. Young. Yeah, yes. Um, okay, and of course we have some book recommendations for you. So if you want to continue to read another book by a native author, we have Sisters of the Never Sea by Cynthia Letich-Smith. 
And so this is a retelling of Peter Pan, and you have Lily and Wendy who are not only best friends, but they are stepsisters. And Wendy is English born, but Lily is part of the Muskogee Creek. And so during the summer, they're being separated. Uh, Wendy's gonna stay with her father in New York City, and Lily's gonna stay behind with her mother in Tulsa. So they're not sure what this means for their family or their little brother, Michael. But little do they know that a mysterious boy has been watching them from a tree outside their window. Spoiler alert, it's Peter Pan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then if you really like the uh, reservation aspect and the native traditions of um, Hero of the Water Monster, I always get the name backwards, um, we have Brez Dogs by Joseph Bruchok. I believe we're butchering the names, we apologize. Um, this is about Molly who loves spending time with her grandparents at their home on a Wabanaki reservation. She's there for a visit when suddenly all travel shuts down. It's the coronavirus pandemic. Um, she'll have to stay with her grandparents for the duration. So when she stays there, one of the dogs living on the reservation shows up, shows up at their door and their family knows that he'll protect them too. So it's all told in verse and it highlights how the community cares for one another through plagues past and present. It's a really cool one to check out. Okay, and so that's, that's it for our little month. talk this month. Uh, we'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye.